Hi, this is Travis Serio with Robert McNeil and Associates, and today we're going to build a trellis ring using Rhino 7 and its new Sub-D tools. If you've been enjoying these videos, make sure you check out our website at tips.rhino3d.com. Here you'll find the latest video tutorials on how to do all sorts of great things with Rhino. If you have something specific in mind, check out all the categories on the side. Click on one to quickly drill down into videos on those particular topics. In this video, I'll be using a toolbar and a set of preloaded gemstones that you can download from tips.rhino3d.com under the heart-shaped ring tutorial. In the tutorial link, you'll see a download the associated files. Here you can get the toolbar and gemstones. If you're unfamiliar with how to use those, make sure you watch the heart-shaped ring video for full in-depth details on how to get those loaded up and use them. All right, let's get started with our trellis. This tutorial sort of assumes that you've made a couple pieces or dabbled with Sub-D just a little bit so that you know how to select edges, faces, and verts. I've got my Gemblox toolbar loaded up that I mentioned earlier in the video. And so those are ready to go. I'm gonna draw a finger rail curve in the front view here from zero uh, at 16.5, which is my favorite go-to ring size for videos. And then with the top view selected, I'll go ahead and launch this round. This, this is view dependent, so if you still had the front selected and you clicked the button, you're going to get this. So make sure you have the view that you want it oriented in and hit go. I'm going to do a 6.5 for a one carat, hold shift, snap ortho, and drop it out there at the origin. And then I'm going to scoot it up, and this is why I did the curve first so that I know uh, kind of where I want the height of the center gym to go. I'll immediately select top again and rerun the round. And this time I'm going to do five millimeters for a half carat. I'll snap ortho again to align our gym. And um, I'll bring it up here and we can rotate from center. Now I have a hot key for rotate, which is my control R. And so... Um, and so if you see me rotating things and not clicking the button, I'll tell you that I'm rotating, but I'm using the hotkey behind the scenes. It's the magic of Hollywood. So uh, I also have the mirror key wired up to my control D. So I'll just mirror that over real quick and get moving. All right, with our three stone set up in place, I'm gonna build an under bezel first for our center gym here. And to do that, um, I'm just gonna make a simple Sub-D torus. So I've gone to the Sub-D tools tab, clicking on the Sub-D torus, and then with vertex snap enabled, I can snap to the bottom of my gym. And so I'll just draw a torus out here real quick. And I'm not being real particular about dimensions on it. But with the setup there, we'll go ahead and start to shape this a little bit so that it's just a little more fitting for an under bezel instead of uh, like a tube. So I've got a loop of faces on the top that I've extruded out. I'll just extrude one more here out of the bottom, kind of round that out. Now, I want this to be more slanted than arced. So I really want to grab all these faces across the top. Uh, so to do that without making sure I get any gems or anything else there, I'll go ahead and I will drag out here with the faces selection filter enabled. And that way I grab just those. I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to scale this outward. And so that gives me a little bit more taper to the outside. With faces still selected, uh, I'll hold shift again, get this loop, and then uh, I'll bring these in with control selected to make that a little bit more crisp. Then let's grab this group, and I'm just going to push and pull a few faces until I'm happy with the look. Uh, this has a little bit of a backwards counter taper to it that I want to get rid of. So maybe in edge mode here, uh, we could either delete this or just pull it down. Let's try just pulling it down and see what we get. 
this one's no longer needed, so we can just hit delete. Um, if I wanted to be real particular here, we could go in this face mode again, maybe upside down this time. And we could get everything across the bottom here. And then um, we can use the scale Z axis and just push those down to kind of flatten all that out. If you wanted to go a step further, you could crease these and make these, you know, harder edged on the bottom. But I think that this will work nicely for our tutorial version here. So we'll place that where we feel like it's good. Maybe tuck that in a little bit so that it's a smaller radius than our center gem. We don't want it hanging out from the top view there. So this is good enough. You could sit and play with this more and uh, change the proportions or the contouring on it to whatever you like. So the next thing that we'll want to do here is get this copied over to these. And since this is uh, a block, we could edit the block and add it to that. Or um, another way we could do it is we can use the transform tools here and I'll pick flow along curve. And so we'll select our under bezel and then we want the curve, the base curve is going to be this girdle line curve that's built into the gem block. So we'll pick that. And now when we come over here to this other gem, we have to be particular about one, where we picked our base curve, I picked just to the right of this center line. If we follow the sort of the Y axis down the table of the gym, I picked just to the right. So we need to do that same thing on this one and go to the right. Now, when I do this, stretch is turned off here. So what's going to happen is as we compress this thing smaller, the geometry is going to get squirrely. See? So how we avoid that in case that happens to you is let's run the command and we'll set stretch equals yes. Now let's repick, careful to pick on the proper spots of the curve. And so now it ends up where we want it. And since I've got history turned on here, as we move this, this thing will keep up and then if I make any type of changes to the overall shape, that'll keep up as well. Uh, once again, uh, I have mirror as my control D, so I'll mirror from world origin there and just copy that over to the other side. Now we've got like the ultimate in history wired up here, and all these are keeping up nicely. Now, remember, this is based on the flow is happening in the distance from here to here. So as I change this, the other ones will actually appear to drop because it's maintaining that relationship between the distance of the curve and this original under bezel. So that's pretty fun. Let's do the shank now. If we, if we use the gumball and we hold shift, and while holding shift, we hit control, we'll extrude a surface here. We can see it over here in properties as a surface. In order to get a sub D out of the deal, we need to go to the sub D tools tab and click this little heart on the curve and that'll make the curve sub D friendly. And so that kind of adjusts the curve a little bit and lets the gumball know that you want a sub D out of the deal now when you do that instead of a surface. So let's, let's do that and now we get a sub D. So you gotta make your curve sub D friendly and that can change their shape depending on what type of curve they are. But for what we're doing right here, it's perfect. So I've extruded out two loops and that's because I'm gonna split the shank going a couple different directions here. And I've realized that uh, my gems are sitting a little low. So I'm gonna move this one up a bit and then I'm going to move this one and let's, uh, gosh, that might be too high now. So let's, let's split the difference here. Go down a little bit more. I don't want those too tucked, but, um, that's good enough for them all. All right, let's, um, let's move along. 
So I've adjusted those and now I'm going to grab this edge up here and just extrude it a couple times and I'll pull it inward and then I'll grab this edge and I'll go this direction with it and then I'll fidget just a tiny bit with our contouring here. I'm not going to be real particular about it because we're going to thicken that up. But with this sort of setup, this is a little tall. With this sort of setup, I'll go ahead and mirror this down the middle using the reflect command up here in the sub tools. And we're going to mirror along the y-axis and we want to keep this side and right click for automatic. And so that gives us this nice history enabled symmetry along the y-axis. Okay, next, this is no good to us flat, so let's thicken it up using offset sub D. With offset sub D, we want a distance of one, and it's important that we do both sides equals yes and solid equals yes here. When we do that, it'll thicken that thing up to two millimeters since it gives us one millimeter on each side here. Um, the next thing I'll do, I accidentally clicked the sweep there. I meant to click the uh, remove crease. So there we go. So let's click that. And then I'll just widen that out just a hair. Now from here, um, we can sit and play with this thing more. If we wanted, you could, you know, do more of a sort of a tulip shape on that or something. I'm going to worry about that a little later. Let's, let's move along and get some drawn prongs out here. So uh, the old Trav would have told you to draw a curve and pipe it because I think starting after Rhino 5, pipe had history. And so I would just, you know, blend a curve across here and run the pipe command and, and then just edit the curve and draw all your fancy wires. But I want to um, I want to do something a little different. I want to do it all with sub D. So let's do this. Let's um, let's edit the block instance that is the center gem, and get us a sort of a target or a profile for a prong. So I'll double left click the gem there, and that puts us in block edit mode. And then grabbing a circle here, I'll make sure the vertex snap is on. And I'll just draw a circle out, maybe 1.1 millimeters looks good. And then the next thing that I'll need here is I'll need a um, I'll need sort of a target that I can that I can blend a curve to. So I need a vertical line segment, and I can get that just by coming down here. Uh, I'll I'll snap on to. Uh, Let's go let's snap here, and then we'll highlight this. And since Smart Track is on, once it highlights, I can hit Tab, and uh, that should get me in elevator mode there, which it does. And so that way I'm constrained to this edge of the gym there. And so that's good. That, that gives us a circle and a line, which we can use as a target to do our blend. Now, when I exit block edit, since this is a block, we've edited the core definition to include a new circle and a line. So that gets included with our additional blocks. That one got copied to here. And then, then since this one got mirrored, it ends up on the other side, which is exactly the target we need to go to. And those scaled proportionally with the gym as well. All right, so now, Let's run blend CRV, blend curve. I have a hotkey, but there's blend curve. And let's go our line to our other line segment. And then if we hold shift on this middle point, we can adjust these handles here together. So that's pretty good. I'll hit enter to complete that. And then so there, there we have our, our pulled prong line there. And then uh, the old me would have, would have piped that or swept that with history and edited it. Uh, the new me says, I'm going to try this method. I'm going to do sweep one, uh, sub D sweep one, that is. And this will be our curve. 
And then this is our profile, which is down inside the block. And same with this. And we'll hit go. Now, by default, we don't have enough rail segments, so we can just scroll wheel that up or down uh, or click the buttons here or type it in, whatever makes you happy. I'm going to try to get as few as I can so it's really adjustable. So I think six is the magic number. I know in order to get the trellis kind of woven in and out a little bit, I'll have to play with this one and this one with some over under action. So we'll hit OK. And then there we go. So now the next thing to do is to get this uh, capped up. One thing I want to show you that I noticed here, since we've edited our block by going in and adding this, that changes the way flow along surfaces history wants to update these under bezels. When I move them now, you can see that there's some 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 performance issue there that uh, looks weird. So if we go back in here, we're technically done with these curves and profiles. So we can just delete them from the main block and that'll get rid of them there. And then that restores balance to the universe again. And Rhino's like, oh, I get it. You wanted that curve and not all this weirdness when you flow. So now uh, everything's right with the world again. All right, so now let's move forward and let's cap this off. So <laughs> this used to be a nightmare in, in long days ago when you were trying to fill these things with even quads. But there's now a fill hole here and if you pick an edge, you'll get uh, an automatic cap. So let's right click this and let's click automatic. And we get this beautifully made set of quad patches across here and not some weird triangulated thing like days ago would have given us. But, um, but so this is real nice. The only bad thing is, is since I'm doing this with sub D and not just a regular pipe, I wanted to shape the prong tips into more like a claw or like a filed prong. And with them being uh, at this angle, I can't really pull it and shape it in the direction that I want. So if I back up and I run fill and I pay more attention to which edge I pick as the root edge when doing automatic, I get a different face alignment. And here you can see the faces there's an edge traveling this direction, and that's exactly what I want. So uh, I'll show you why here. Let's do let's do ghosted so that I can pick through some stuff. And I'm going to put us in face mode to make my chances of hitting my target better. So let's extrude prong up a couple times. Okay, so now here's here's the thing that pipe wouldn't have gotten me very easily. When I come back and I grab these two faces, I want to put the gumball into a line by object, and then I'll extrude it this direction one time. And that's where pipe would have let me down. And then I'll just scale these in, and let's get out of our selection mode there. And... Um, from here, we can start to shape the prong more like we had filed it. Now, obviously, this is for the render version only, but that's half the battle. So there's that. And uh, we could sit and play with that a lot more if we wanted to, but I think I'll call it. I think I'll call it good. All right, so let's do the same thing to the other one. So remember, uh, when you do this fill and you select your boundary, oh, which one is it? I'm gonna go with this one. We do automatic. Ah, that was it. Ah, I got lucky. All right, so let's do that one and that one. And then we'll extrude this up two times again. And then we still have the gumball in align to object mode here. So the faces are getting extruded in a direction 
that's natural. All right, now let's turn this off. And we'll grab those and pull them up just to give them a little bit more of a dome look to them. And then they're they're pretty round, so let's let's pull them in just a little bit. All right, so that's good enough. You could sit and make those super pointy or less pointy or whatever you like. Okay. All right, so now it's just a simple game of we can mirror this using the mirror command. And then um, I'm going to take the one we mirrored and I'll edit it just slightly. I want to get the gumball back in C-planar world mode here to make sure that whatever I do to it doesn't copy over to the child. And then there we go. We've, we've quickly produced those two. Now these are a rotate, not a mirror. And we're going to do copy. We're going to hit zero for center. And we'll come around this side and then right click. So now we've got our over under looking nice. All right. So now let's quickly get this other prong blended down into the shank down here. And um, to do that, it's going to be a little bit different than what we did for these, where we added a circle curve. Unfortunately, there's there's no way to to blend that open curve to a face. So what we really want is bridge between two faces. So the simple solution here is probably to just draw a sphere up here to use as a prong cap. And then we'll just bridge to that. Uh, starting out, the sphere has four faces on top, which is not ideal. So if we run that and set the subdivisions to zero, we can get a sphere that's more box-like with just one face on the top and bottom. And then uh, because I'm going to shape it in this point, I want to make sure that the face of the box is pointed towards this big facet right here. And then let's um, let's go ahead and hit go and see how big that is. It's a little large. So we'll just scale it down. And maybe we'll rotate it and kick it back just a little bit. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Okay, so as I was saying, if we try to blend these two now, like this face to this face, it's going to get weird. So I need to I need to insert some edge loops into our our shank here to dice this up a little bit. So I'll uh, I'll right click this to do an edge ring, and then I'm looking for the middle. I usually roll with my mid snap on, so we'll go ahead and snap to mid there, and then. I'll go ahead and quickly left click and repeat that. And then this outside face, if I hit tab and go into this box mode, I'm looking for a square face about the size of our cube. And that's probably it there on the far left. So I'll go ahead and insert. And so that's our, that's our target to our other target. We'll go back into tab. We'll select this. This might be tilted a little far forward and create some goofy twisting. So we'll see. We may have to we may have to mess with that a little bit. We'll go ahead and run bridge. And then uh, it gave me two segments here from obviously the last time I must have ran bridge. So I'll say OK, because that looks pretty good. And then let's get this edge. And let's just bring it down here as expected this is a little twisted so I'm just gonna fix it <laughs> and then we can get caught up in the details real quick here but I don't hate where this is headed Okay, now like the previous one, 
from the other side, I'll do a couple extrusions here. And that's probably too much. You know, if this were the production model, uh, we'd just kind of keep keep extruding that out, right? That give us plenty of prong to work with at the bench. But since I'm modeling this for YouTube here, let's um, let's make this thing look more set. So let's bring this down, and then just like before. I'm going to bring a face outward and then start to uh, start to pull those in. Now there's not, if you look, we had an extra loop there. So we're not going to get that cap like we want unless we insert some more geometry here. I don't really want to insert an edge loop. Let's see what it looks like. It's going to radiate through this whole shank. And I don't know that I want that. It puts a lot of extra edges in here. So we can localize our edges by using the uh, simple insert point command. And this is pretty cool because I can get that round top. Now this, all, this command automatically dumps you into edge mode, but I can just insert local detail where I want it. And then that way, I don't have to fight with a full edge loop radiating through the entire shank. So I can get that domed top that we were looking for like this. Pretty fun. And so this created an ingon, so it's it's got a five-sided shape, which is fine. And Rhino loves it and doesn't care. Anyway, we could sit and play with that for a while. Okay, so that's that's good. Now we just need to transfer all this stuff, right? So let's grab this and then let's do um, let's do reflect. This time, let's do it on the x-axis. We want it on this side, sure. Right click and say go. And then so that copied it over. And then we'll immediately run that again. Pick you and do the Y axis. We'll click that side. Now let's do whatever it is we want to do to finish up the shank. I think maybe uh, grabbing some of these faces and either pulling them to adjust them or even adding another loop by extruding and cleaning that up, scaling that in. There's a lot of there's a lot of different options there that you could explore. For the video though, I think let's um can I select all these? Let's select all those and then from the side view here I'm going to apply a slight taper to this. So let's go up to transform and then let's grab taper. And because I'm really bad at picking the exact middle line, I'll click on the dot with the aid of the grid snap. Click up here and then we can go in here. We need to make sure that flat equals yes, or things are going to get real strange in these other views. And it's easy to forget that. So I've got flat equals yes and infinite equals yes to give me more of a straight taper. And so I'm going to scale down since I have the grid snap on. That's a little more than a millimeter. Maybe let's turn the grid snap off so I can get a more exact click. Let's take it to about two. And then there we go. So it gives us a little bit of taper. All right, from this point, it's just pushing and pulling and refining your shape to however it is that you may want it, whether it be thicker and thinner in spots or However it is that you like it, you can push and pull it until it looks exactly the way you want. Round up these prongs more, scale them bigger, smaller, however it is you like.
So I hope you found this video useful and uh, thanks for watching.